two stairs so far. This is a little difficult to film, but... Yeah, that was two stairs so far. Just the stairs, everybody. Just the stairs. have a couple cats and a small dog. No pet stains. Great. So nothing really to worry about there. Just some some miscellaneous spots that we're not sure what they are. Uh, one's hit one's hidden under a bed. And a couple other ones. Uh, more out in the open areas. In this little desk. They moved a lot of stuff. Um, and I think this was the last thing standing that didn't get moved, or it did get moved to right here. So I'm going to have to move that around and put some styrofoam blocks under it. Or see if they have somewhere it can be moved to. Maybe he was waiting till I got here so I can help him take it downstairs. I'll ask him to find out. It's much easier if it's just down there and out of the way. So in today's job, stairway obviously, and then uh, four bedrooms in this close little hallway section up here. Separately. I'm not quite getting close enough to it. The beater bar is probably not letting it come through. Let's see that this hasn't been moved in quite a while. Probably it's a different color. It's dusty. You can tell by the dust on the cable here. This is going to be a uh, one that I actually have to probably empty the canister before I get done because it's already looking kind of close to full. There's the verdict. Look at that. I've done the stairs, a small portion of that hall, and about 
30% of the master bedroom. It's crazy. All right, guys. Look at all that brand new bag I just put in. And there's some up top here too. That's what actually stopped the vacuum because it just coated that filter. I'm gonna have to clean that filter off. Yep. See how it covered that up? You lose all your suction as soon as that covers completely up. So I'm gonna clean this up and then I'm gonna continue vacuuming. See you back inside. Guys, I just vacuumed a few little spots that I didn't get to yet. Literally, that light, these three strokes right there that I just did, that's the areas I did. And that's what I got out. Just enough cable to get to the corner here. There was furniture there that was blocking it, but this hasn't been moved in a while, so it's dusty.
I remember right, from what I was told when I came by and did the estimate, uh, this, since they've lived here, this carpet hasn't been professionally done. They have used a, a carpet cleaner, he said. Um, I don't think he ever mentioned which one it was. Uh, probably doesn't really matter so much, but uh, that is basically the only thing that's been used. Is uh, one that you can either rent or maybe they bought one. But it has been oh, somewhere between 8 and 10 years. I can't remember the exact number that you told me. Somewhere around there. here because we helped them move that desk downstairs. Get that all taken care of. Make my way down this hallway. almost completely cleared out three rooms which is nice for me it allows me to make bigger movements and sometimes it goes almost as fast as the room being furnished obviously I'm going to just clean more carpet and it becomes more difficult if there's Stains or anything like that that were hidden underneath uh, any of that furniture, which there was, or is, I should say, in one of the rooms next to me here. It uh, looks like there's one over there, too. The bed was, was in that area. under the beds that I've seen or remember seeing so far.
only thing I don't like about this particular vacuum. One and a half rooms and a little bit of hallway. It's crazy. All right, all emptied. Third canister through. I got the rest of this hallway, two rooms. Comment down below how many times do you think I'm gonna have to empty? One more or two more? Pat Vander and general dry soil. I'd say this one hides it the best and has the most that I've, I've done in a while. You can't get stuck in the room. Flaw that. Gotta be careful around that. the hidden stand under the under the bed, the second one I should say now. This is the bigger of the two that we've seen. So that right there.
last day. They said it was only going to be 70 today, but I've already gotten rid of my sweatshirt. It's so far it's beautiful outside. I'm glad I decided to wear shorts. Be a little, a little too hot. I don't know. I think the the uh, my weather source might be a little off. I wouldn't be surprised if I look at it again. It's going to go up a little bit, and it's going to be mid 70s or so. It's great. Mid 70s to 80 is my favorite uh, weather. I'm a July baby, so I have 90 to 106 degree weather during my birthday, but I prefer to 75 to 80 ish area just because it's like perfect beach weather if you're able to go to a beach and then also perfect carpet cleaning weather it's not cold and it's not too hot Ooh, some crunch So this part right there is not worn, but this part right here is pretty well worn. Exactly where the uh, bed was at. Hey guys, almost done with the backing of this room and all the carpet. If you voted and left a comment down below, I think it's just going to end up being the one. One more canister, so three total. Three total canisters. It has been a while since I've had a job that required me to empty the canister three times. Full mark and almost there. We're about right at the top of the label here. Three canisters, guys. Can you imagine if I just came in and pre sprayed this and started cleaning? Three canisters worth of pet hair and general soil. I would have wetted all that down and struggled getting it all out. And I guarantee you because of how much I pulled out that uh, this, this job would obviously not turn out as well. And then also, most likely, I'd probably get a call back because I wouldn't have gotten all this out because it's wet. And it probably would have resoiled, rapidly soiled or or wick back up or brown out sometimes happens and I think I've mentioned in the past before ever since I've been in business for myself and have vacuumed every job I have had zero callbacks uh, issues with anything and I think it ha has to do a lot of it has to do with um, vacuuming first um, in my personal opinion, I use better chemistry than what I was given in the past. And then, of course, everybody's favorite, the CRB. I did not have that in the past either. Truly believe that. Wanted to show you my trash here. So, look, it's about three quarters of the way. I mean, you could probably compact that down, obviously, and fit a lot more. But I'm um, just dropping it in without compacting it. It's about 75% full in this bag here. That is crazy. Three canisters, guys. So now I brought it outside. I'm gonna rinse everything out of this, and because it's a nice sunny day, 
It'll dry right out and then I'm also going to spray off my uh, my filters because look at that it is nasty caked so I'm going to spray those off and uh, that way it'll be good to go for the next job so all right I'm gonna get this started all right guys I'll do my best to do a little pre-spraying with you we'll be done a little bit So this part of the video might be a little shorter than the rest, but I did have someone request it. So I know it's been a little while since I've done some pre-spraying. Or at least pre-spraying on video, I should say. Every job gets pre-spray. Alright guys, I'm gonna keep this going. Slowly time. surprised I haven't had any kick out yet. Considering the three canisters of stuff I pulled out with the vacuum. <clears throat> it's amazing. Sometimes it just takes going over a little indentation where the furniture was at and it throws out what I've gathered so far.
So for your cleaners out there who happen to be watching this video and at this point, this job is getting treated, pre-treated with black label and a little bit of booster of Pure O2 from Truck Mount Forums. Pretty much almost every residential job that I, I do, I can get away with using that combination and have great results. The only time I do anything additional, there's some more kick out, is when there is a lot of stains or a lot of pet men. Then you want to bring out your the uh, pet urine treatment before cleaning like unchanged or if you have a product that you, you like the only other one I have used is OSR odor stain remover it's a powder form I personally prefer unchained I think it's better results at least for me and it's a liquid and not a powder which I prefer um, in that case, much easier to mix. This area is pretty well worn and it's causing my CRB to want to go to the right. I'm going to struggle to one hand it when it does that. But yeah, black label, Puro 2. Puro 2 has some citrus in it, so it helps with grease a little bit. And of course, if you got anything crazy, crazy heavy, um, doing a booster of Grout Master helps, or um, trying to think of a product, citrus solvent. That's gotten some, some grease stains out for me quite easily. I tend to use that when I run into actual grease or oil from... some different spots. I had one a while back, an area rug in a, a man cave. And we had a, and we had a nice like hardly in there. And there's some grease stains from walking across the area rug to where the bathroom was in there. And so I used that citrus solvent with a little bit with my grease spray and it cut right through it. Took it right out. And that area rug looked next to me it was just a synthetic basically bound rug made out of carpet just kind of like this and it was a lighter color so that's what I use in most situations black label and Puro 2 if there are some pet stains present a lot of times I'll use BioPro 10k from them as well instead um, of black label but not always, because Black Label does, from what I've experienced so far, does just as well. I just keep BioPro on hand, just in case, because it is an enzyme free spray. So if any of you out there happen to be watching this, you're thinking about starting your own carpet cleaning business, um, you're already in the industry, but you're starting, getting ready to start your own, like I did. If you want to, feel free to comment below. If you have any questions, um, 
the cleaners I use, or where I got a lot of my tools, what machine I'm running currently. I'd be happy to answer, and I will try and get to you as soon as I possibly can. I have had a guy do a ride along with me about a month ago. That's in uh, the Bay Area in California here. To learn a little bit about what I do, see if it's a good fit for his business model that he's working on. veteran watcher of my channel please let me know down below hashtag BDS brew I want to see how long you guys have been watching I appreciate you guys so much you guys are what's making this channel thrive and get bigger commenting, hitting the like button, being a subscriber, puts this channel out and more recommendations for others that enjoy this type of content. So more people are seeing it because of that, so thank you. So down below, put hashtag BDS crew so I know where you're at, who you are. I've seen a lot of comments for from a handful of you from all the way from the beginning of starting the uh, the um, vlogs and then I've seen a couple comments from a few of you even even further back when I was doing the split videos of different different um, stages of the cleaning which I like doing but you guys gave more love 
to the vlogs. So they're longer, more you know, more content in one video for you guys to enjoy. You don't have to click on as many videos. So I feel like overall it's worked out better. And I've noticed you guys seem to like the carpet cleaning videos more than the tile. I was uh, looking at some of the stats on views and all that and the carpet cleaning videos average about three times or more the views than the tile ones which kind of surprises me but then when I see stuff like that happening and the difference in the carpet I can understand why you guys would like the carpet cleaning videos more I will continue to do tile videos here and there because it's important that I put that content out as well for those who are actually potentially looking for that type of video and for my clients in the area that need something to see as far as my work. So that was kind of the original goal of doing these videos is to showcase my work so it's not just my reviews that are speaking, it's my actual video work because you can't, can't deny results on video at that point. So I try and put a little bit together of each thing so they can see my work without having to hire me to find out, which is a nice bonus. You know, when you're looking for somebody to do something for you, referrals are fantastic. And they usually seal the deal for you, but if you can spend some time and do a little video work of, of everything you're doing, uh, you'll get more jobs. And the reason why I know that for sure is I've obviously earned a couple jobs off my YouTube videos, but some short little clips I've done to have my, my ad uh, advertisement guy in his business put together caused me to earn extra jobs so I fully believe in this is more valuable in multiple ways for anybody's business you know no matter don't really matter what industry you're in if you could do good get good reviews good referrals and show visuals pictures and uh, video, I think you're going to be a winner. Alright guys, CRB is done. Alright guys, start this rinse off with a little kick out vacuum up. Got a little bit more over here. And to go back on the subject of cleaners I'm using, guys, for those who might be watching and are curious, I am rinsing currently with Rob's Ultimate All Fiber Rinse. That's also from Truck Mount Forums. I personally really like this rinse. It is also a liquid-based one and not powder. So for me, in the rinse tank, I like that more. Um, easier to mix. Don't have to heat it up. Prior, you know, to get it to mix up and break down to your chemical tank. So I personally like that, and it does a good job. I mean, if it didn't do a good job, I wouldn't use it. But it does. And I actually love it on pet urine jobs specifically cat 
Um, if you guys watched, well, I'm just taking a, a guess. I don't remember what number it was, but uh, log 25, if I remember right. Heavy pet urine job. That one is all cat. Repeat offender. Um, I'm there every six months. I've cleaned it three times now. Um, it's the same cat. It's just an older cat. You know, she loves the cat. But anyways, besides that, the yellowing and orange-ish color that gets left behind every time from that cat, it almost pops right out after I've done my unchained process. And then when I rinse it, uh, clean the carpet and rinse it with my normal cleaning products like Black Label, Pure 2, um, or BioPro 10K, like I mentioned earlier, um, and rinse it with the Rob's Ultimate All Fiber Rinse, those spots always come out. And we, we all know cat urine is worse than, than dog, so that's what really sold me on that rinse. It came out, I think, last year. Um, and I was like, oh cool, new rinse, it's liquid. I'll buy a bottle, see how well it works. Well, I used it on that job, and when all the yellowing and orangish color popped out, I was like, okay, this stuff's amazing. And then I used it on my personal home a couple times now. Um, she's already seen, my wife is always saying after every time I clean it, it's like, gosh, this carpet feels softer than it ever did from when you worked at XYZ. I'll go ahead and leave the company name out. Just, it's just the cleaners they had. It wasn't wasn't any other reason really besides, you know, pre vacuuming and uh, CRB and that I didn't have to do. But besides those points, the carpet didn't feel crunchy, which has a tendency to do when you, if you're using a a higher pH uh, pre-spray and you're rinsing not with an, an acidic base rinsing agent you run the risk of the carpet feeling crunchy and not soft um, other things I've ran into that can cause that as well um, have been on jobs that were after somebody scotch guarded the carpet. So I'm just, my only guess as far as that is improper mixture ratio of whatever scotch guarding product is being used. So if you overuse it and you don't rinse, or sorry, not rinse, you don't mix it according to the label, you run the risk of probably having crunchy carpet too from that. But it's ever since I've been using these rinses, and these chemicals, all my carpets have felt softer. I mean, it does say it on the rinse that it will leave the carpets feeling softer, and I, 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 they say the label is the law, and it ain't lying on that one. Because even my wife has said it, the carpet feels softer for, for a longer period of time on top of that in our house. We have pets, so I am always using this rinse on our house because it's it's mostly uh, general soil and in the pet dander and whatnot. But just in case, I always run this rinse to neutralize because I am using a a 10ish or 11 pH. Um, if I put pure O2, and don't quote me on this, I gotta look at the bottle again. If I put pure O2 in my mix of the pre-spray, you're putting the carpet in an alkaline state of 11 pH. So unless you have a neutralizing alkaline product, which there are, they are out there. Um, I have one. And it does a great job, but whenever there's pets involved, I automatically go acidic to help neutralize 
this in case there is some small little piddle spots that are, you know, obviously really small, don't require a big old treatment prior to get it clean because if it's not that much, then BioPro 10K or Black Label will take care of that, no problem. And a lot of other cleaners probably will too. But it's funny how there's a lot more to carpet cleaning than a lot of us are led to believe. Improper chemistry can lead to poor carpet cleaning results. Or, I mean, they could look great afterwards, they can look like this, but if you're using too high of a pH, and not rinsing it with the right rinsing agent. You know, allow the carpet to resoil faster, most likely. So just a few things to take into consideration. The guys that are running in and out of houses, <clears throat> most likely are probably not rinsing with something can't say all of them are, but, you know, and there's ways to get around it. If you don't have hard water, you got like a soft water set up in your, your rig, you know, that makes a difference. But if you got really hard water in your area, a rinse is going to help with that. So my areas around 80 to 120 or so in hard water and there's other areas uh, in the country or uh, different states that have a lot higher twice as bad or more of hard water and so they gotta use a rinse for sure to help fight with that all right let me get behind the door and make my way out to the next room all right guys more kick out back in room number two Been a couple videos since I've done this. I figured I'd let you guys see it. Did I get it all? Whoops. Slip right there. Alright, guys, that's it for this room. Close that. Oh, down the spot. have to use is just a straight wand so when I got to things like this that I can get under I had to go like this and see when you get to a certain point your suction isn't doing anything or next to nothing so you're leaving the carpet damper underneath there you're probably not extracting everything out so having a wand like this that Swivels and has that curvature at the bottom allows you to get under areas that you normally wouldn't be able to a little further. So you can suck that high up. You want to get that area there so you don't leave a clean to dirty mark, you know, potentially. It's not that often that it's actually dirty under there, but. You know, if you can clean a little further and get, get some more out of it, it's never a bad thing.
So there's that spot that was hidden under the bed. See how much it's broken down just from the food spray and CRV. That's good news. I think it's all going to come right out. Let's see what happens. There it is. And there it goes. All gone. Those are my favorite ones that are hidden and have been here for who knows how long. And they pop right out. Shoes coming untied. I must have stepped on the shoestring here. about we're over halfway down in the hallway coming up on the third bedroom before I get started in room three. Right there, 
from right outside the door. Look at that. Check out that transition. It was nice. So this house I'm running 150 feet of hose. Not a ton, but the average is 100 to do probably 80% of the jobs I get in these residential areas. So I know I talked about it in another video, but usually if I'm running more than two lengths, so 50 foot lengths, uh, once I get to a certain point, a lot of times I'll pull that little extra bit of hose that I needed back out the door and unplug that third line and put it back to the 100 feet. And the reason being is the sh shorter amount of hose you got, the less you got cramped up in the house, the better your suction will be and lift, therefore your dry times with your dry strokes will increase or decrease, sorry, so you'll decrease the time it takes to dry. that stain that was over here, remember, under the bed, room number one with the stain under the bed. That one just about disappeared with the pre-spray breaking it up and came right out. I don't know how long that one was there. So a little educational point on the truck mounts, depending on your setup, of course. And for me, I have three different filters. Of course, I got my my boss filter, the one that's sitting on the ground outside the van, and then right inside, the one that comes with the machine, uh, the basket in there. And then there's a filter in the waste tank. So those need to be checked regularly. The one in the waste tank is probably not as much. It just depends on the job. Um, anything that can make its way through the little openings on the other two, for me, for example, will sometimes get caked on that. So if you're losing you feel like it's not as strong as normal 
you got three sources, or at least I've got three sources I have to check. And having that boss filter has made a world of difference for me. I'm not having to clean the basket, uh, the first portion of where the where the vacuum line normally ends at the machine. I never have to clean that out. Like, almost never, I should say. Sometimes a little bit of debris gets in there and gets stuck. But for the most part, ever since I've had that boss filter, I've had to maybe pull a couple little things out, but it's never caked with anything, never restricting my airflow. And then the one that's in the waste tank, I checked that one just to be sure, just because it's more of an out of sight, out of mind one to see. And the only time that I've had stuff make its way through those first two sections is if I'm doing a dryer vent. I know some people are wondering why I'd be doing a dryer vent with my, my truck mount, but mainly only because I have those three filters and if I do a dryer vent, I immediately empty out every single one of them and clean my, my, uh, my waste tank and all that so I don't have anything blocking. But the strength of the truck mount makes for good suction to pull everything out of the vent. For those who have seen my videos, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's just one little thing. Technical thing that I do. But like I said, that boss filter has been life-changing for me as far as having to clean things up as often. Now I just pull that little bag out that I've shown you guys and throw it away and put a new one in and I'm done. Usually cuts my time dealing with cleaning that. Gosh, down less than half, it feels like. So worth the money, especially if you got employees. Put those on all your vans. Because now you're lowering your overhead and they're going to pay for themselves eventually. So that's my plan in the future with each van that I grow into. Less maintenance at the end of the day or even in between jobs. Because when I didn't used to vacuum or have to due to my old place of work, they didn't provide us with it. Uh, my waste tank and my that uh, basket filter in the machine was always caked bad. I would have to clean it at basically every single job and it would be caked on. So I'd have to pull everything out, then clean it out, pressure clean it out, just to get back to normal. And then I'd sometimes spend five, 10 minutes on it. Whereas now with the filter, unscrew those two parts, pull the bag out, put a new bag in, put it back in, and I'm done. It's like, if I wasn't videoing, probably a minute and 30 seconds or less. Think about that over an average of three jobs a day. If I have to clean every job, clean it at every job, what sounds better? Even five minutes per job? or one and a half or less. I'm taking the one and a half or less. So if you're looking for a good filter, at least the one that I've tried personally, the Boss filter that TMF had made for them to their specs, was a great job.
between getting this wand, that filter, and the CRB, I think those are my three top favorite tools that I've purchased that I've never used of quality in the past. Alright guys, room three, all done. Alright guys, last bedroom. Picking up a kick out from earlier. Big mama, mama jamma. Look at all that. Ooh, ooh. Nasty. Get all bunch of it kicked out right in one spot. Super dusty right here. Baseboards. A lot of dust accumulated in here. Might as well get that for them. This side of the bed was most dusty. Alright, guys, I'm gonna go check my filter because I vacuumed up quite a bit. Some of it I vacuumed up uh, in between video sections here, so I'm gonna go check on it. All right, guys, let's check check the main boss filter here. Let's see what we got. I feel like I'm losing a little suction, but I also just took a full length off, 50 foot length off. So that's gonna help as well. But yeah, I vacuumed up quite a bit of stuff up. It's all down there in the bottom oh, and wrapped around right here. Look at all that. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's why. So I'm going to get this changed out, guys, and get it back going. All right, guys, let's see some dirty water. Let's see what we got. Look at that chocolate milk. So as you can tell, I put this before raking the carpet. I still got to go in there and scotch guard and rake. So I just happened to come out here, shut my machine off, figured this is a good time to do the dirty water. That way I can let it do its thing while I move on to doing those two things. Okay, sorry about that. Down to the Scotch Guard. Yes, sir. Then just got to rake the carpet out, get rid of my footprints, and help settle it in. All right. And then the fun's over. <laughs> then it's lunchtime. Yes, sir. That's absolutely right. <laughs>
try a different nozzle here. Something stuck in the, the end here, maybe. Let's see if that. There we go. All right, guys, so you obviously get the idea of this, and the reason why I'm going to shorten it up is, like I said earlier, I think I am pretty close to that hour and a half mark, and I'm trying to fit in the raking of the carpet, too. So I know I haven't really done a whole lot of scotch guarding video and such, but um, I'm going to cut this one just so that way I can get that in there for you guys um, and go from there. So thank you, guys. Alright guys, time to rake it out.
these traffic areas are pretty worn down that raking doesn't do much of a difference. As far as appearance goes. Looks like I got a call coming in. I gotta take this. Apologize, guys. <laughs> 